to do another topical video based on a question actually one of you wrote to me yesterday in a comment and you were saying that you are thinking about buying your first chanel bag you want a classic flap in the medium size but that you're kind of thinking you you said that you're still going to get it but you wanted to know whether i thought the exclusivity of that bag had gone and i thought what an interesting question i think the answer to that question is not clear cut i don't think it's a categoric yes or a no here's the reason why and please throughout this i would love to get your opinions so please write those below discuss what you think uh, because I think this is a really good topic. Do I think that it's lost to its um, exclusivity? Kind of yes, kind of no. I'm going to start with the reason why no first, then move on to the reason why yes. All these social media platforms, as everyone knows, they all work on different algorithms. And those algorithms, primarily, they want to keep you on the app as long as possible. They want to waste as much of your time as possible. So if you take Instagram, for example, if you follow accounts, I follow accounts that are about, I do follow the luxury accounts, but I follow accounts that are to do with ducklings, Porsche, and cats. And so when I go on my homepage, I am served up with content about ducklings, handbags, and Porsches. And what does it make me do? It makes me start looking at new accounts. It makes me start following new accounts. It keeps me on the app for longer. And the same thing goes with YouTube. YouTube want all of us to watch and just keep watching content. And how do all of these platforms do it? They do it by learning what it is that we like, who it is we follow, what it is we watch, and then they serve up more and more and more of that content to us because they think, oh, that's what that person likes. Okay, we'll try pushing that at them because they seem to watch a lot of that. Now, what that does, in my opinion, is it can start to make, if you follow luxury, and I know a lot of you are here because you're into that, what it starts to do is you can get to a point where actually because you are seeing so much content so many people around the world with this stuff it can start to feel really commonplace and i don't even mean that in a bad way um i mean that in the kind of way that um you mentioned about how you worried about exclusivity because you feel that that bag is one that you see everywhere now and it doesn't feel special the way it probably would have done say 20 years ago or something but i think that a lot of this can be blamed on the algorithms because of what i'm saying just there they grab all of this content they group it all together uh, there is there, there are definitely communities on social media. You've got the beauty community. I'm really into cars. The cars is what I watch on YouTube. Cars and just mainly cars. And you've got the car community. And in all of those different communities, you're going to get served up loads of content to do with that community. So before you know it, like I watch cars, my homepage on YouTube would make me feel like every person on the earth is getting a new car every month they're not but when you look at it on the face of it you get so used to seeing someone with a new car every month that that becomes normal you get so used to seeing exotic expensive cars that you couldn't go you know you couldn't walk into rolls royce and go i've got no intention of buying one but please can i sit in that car and have a look around it but you can go on YouTube and you can watch someone do that and you can almost be there with them. And it breaks down that barrier between you accessing the brand. Before you know it, a Rolls Royce starts feeling really normal and like everyone's got it, but they don't. It's just because that's the content you consume. So YouTube groups all that content together around you. And before you know it, that's what you're seeing. So it starts to feel very normal. It starts to feel like everyone is driving that car. And then you go out on the road and no one is. I think that is exactly the same thing that is happening on social media with luxury. And it can start to feel as though these items that were once, if you go back to the 90s, only the super rich and the celebs were wearing this stuff, now anyone can have it. It can feel like that's the case. But actually, I think all that's happened is that social media 
has allowed us to all share in our interest in this stuff social media has created like even i do it sometimes you know you i, I will vlog going into a store in a way that might make the store feel not that exciting because you've kind of seen it and in a way you've been there and you've done it with me almost however go out in real life and these bags are not commonplace and that's where i think that the the loss of exclusivity exists online it doesn't exist in real life do you see what i mean that's kind of my thought on it anyway when i when i really started kind of picking it apart i thought actually though there's not everyone wearing these bags out and about it's on social media that you see them consistently and we all know that social media is you know social media is is a tiny part of someone's life their whole day isn't based on what you might see in a picture or whatever it's it's a tiny part of their life but it can feel like it's their whole life and it can feel like that's what normal life should be like so exclusivity do i think it's lost in that point's view i think that social media makes it feel that this stuff is not exclusive because you see it everywhere and the algorithms push that content at you but i don't social media is not true of real life everyone knows that it's not true of real life so that's one angle but the other angle i thought still talking about social media is how it actually probably has in a way affected the exclusivity so if you think about it there are many brands like um if you take hermes i feel like that is one brand that has actually done quite a good job of keeping their exclusivity although i even feel that that's being I feel like eroded is the actual wrong word because I personally think that the being able to share this stuff on social media is great. It's great to be able to scroll pictures and think, oh, that's nice. I like the way you styled that with that outfit. Or someone's been into to the Chanel boutique and they've snapped a picture of a new bag out that's on the shelf. I think it's really great from the point of view of seeing different products. And I think it's also a really nice of connecting with other people that are into this kind of stuff and sharing that and even sharing like care tips and care advice. I know when I bought my first bag, I was terrified because I had this built up expectation in my head of what it was going to be like and buying the bag. And actually it wasn't like that at all. And then it made me more confident the next time I went back in. And social media, I feel for me, has been really good at um, demonstrating the reality of what it's like to go into one of these places and to look at something. Uh, it kind of makes it feel a bit less scary. But yeah, I think Hermes have done a great job with the whole thing about how you have to kind of be selected to have one of their bags. But even that I feel is changing because you, there's more people kind of talking more openly about tips on how you can get the bag and on the process and i think it's almost like insider secrets isn't it and maybe that's why hermes do what they do because they've retained exclusivity because not anyone can walk in and just buy what's on the shelf some days you can from what i've heard but for the most part you can't and this is why i think as well saleron and even Chanel have put their prices up so much because that's possibly one way of trying to keep exclusivity. These items have become really, really popular as a result of social media and these brands possibly are still trying to keep hold of things looking, you know, being as premium as possible and a way of retaining that is to have less sales Therefore, that means putting up the prices to minimize sales. There's also the aspect I wanted to cover as well, the aspect which might also taint how we feel about this stuff. And it is, you, I spoke about this last year, you know the influencer gifting thing. Now, my day job, as I've said, I work in marketing, I do digital market, marketing, I do branding. And giving products or services to influencers is so so common these days because when you do that if you so if you're a brand and let's say you do traditional marketing and you've got a new product out you're going to advertise in a magazine and online let's say like banner advertising you've got to come up with creative 
okay, what's the product? What's the what's the advertising campaign gonna look like? Are we gonna like hire a lavender field and someone's gonna stand in it holding the bag? You know, what are we gonna do? Then you've gotta pay a license for the place where you go and take the photos and make the and get the video content. Then you've also gotta pay for your model. If you've even got one, you might have several of them. You've gotta pay for camera operatives, sometimes a creative director to make the whole thing look the way it should do. Then you've gotta pay for creatives to go and take that raw footage and work it up into different concepts and different visuals that are designed to fit the size of the page and format that will go in the said magazine. You might need a copywriter to write the, the copy that's gonna go alongside it, just what I mean. Then you've gotta pay the magazine just to have it put in there, just to have access to their audience base. That costs a fortune. Yet when you give your product to an influencer, they are the cameraman, they are the editor, and you have access to their audience, an audience which compared to your average magazine is more engaged with that person than someone flicking through the cover of Vogue. And I think that there, there is a two pronged thing with this. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. It's the new way that marketing is going. I know why brands do it. It's cost effective and it's more effective. I don't have a problem with the influencers that get these jobs. I think well done you, honestly, you've built that up. Some of these girls, they've got millions of followers. I just think that's, that's the way it's going. Um, however, I think that when it comes to luxury, back in the day when the type of advertising an advertiser might have done alongside traditional would be to give a bag to a celebrity who would be seen out with it. Now the concept, I feel like maybe the concept um, of gifting to influencers isn't liked is because an influencer feels like a more attainable person. They don't feel like a celebrity, they feel like someone that you can converse with in the comments, someone who is just a normal person making content. So the thought of that normal person being given this item that would normally be given to Angelina Jolie um, feels a bit like, well, you're not very special and she is, so why did you get it? Possibly. It's not what I think, I'm just saying that. So in summary, I think that overall, it feels like the exclusivity possibly has been lost or eroded. But I think if you're thinking of buying something and you're thinking, oh, I don't know, you know, I really used to like that bag, but now everyone's got it. Everyone doesn't have it. I think social media does a great job at making you have a false vision of reality. Um, you know, like the car thing, as I said, I watch cars on YouTube and my homepage is full of people with new cars. So I assume everyone's buying a new car all the time. They're not. That's not even that person's fault. For a lot of these people, that's what they do for a living. And I choose to go and watch their car videos because I'm interested in, oh, what's that car like on the inside? And how does it drive? And I like the free information that they are giving me. But what I'm seeing on their videos, that is not normal everyday life. It's almost like going to a convention. You're gonna be in a small, confined group of space with lots of people that all have the same likes and interests and tastes in whatever the convention is based on. And therefore, when you're in there, it can feel like, oh my God, everyone's really obsessed with Star Wars. But they're not, it's just a few people that have all congregated and that's the luxury community. And actually I think the great thing about the luxury community is it's really good for seeing what's new. I personally really like it for what's good, what should I avoid? Let me know what you think though. Do you agree? Do you disagree? 